Welcome to my channel, where the scariest stories come to life. Before we dive into today's chilling tale, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications, so you never miss a story. Now, let's get into the horror. I had to go on a pretty long road trip for work a couple of years ago. We had to travel, but I decided to drive instead of fly, because I thought it would be more fun. I had a couple of days off before work started in that location, and when we were done, I had a whole week off. During the time that I was there, we would be working for about a week and a half straight. So anyway, I drove straight there on the way, and when we were done, I took my time driving back. I stopped at a few parks that I wanted to go to, and also stopped at some major cities and locations as well. On my road trip back, I would be spending two days just outside of a city where there were a lot of cool parks. I had a hotel, and I was busy exploring for most of the days. During the second day, I went to a really busy park with a bunch of hiking trails and some great views. At one of the hiking spots that was somewhat busy, I ran into a guy who was from the same state as me. We had a brief conversation, and he was really friendly. He said that his name was Mark, and we were from the same general area. It was funny to meet someone else from the same area so far away. Our conversation went on for a while, and Mark ended up asking me what hotel I was staying at. I told him, not realizing how weird it was at the time. But after that, the whole conversation sort of went from normal and friendly to a little weird. I ended up just saying that I really had to go, and kind of walked away. He had started out seeming so normal to me, and then seemed somewhat creepy at the end. We went our separate ways, and I didn't see him for a while. I did happen to notice him when I was leaving about an hour later, though, but there were still quite a few other people in that area, so I didn't think too much of it. That was probably sometime in the afternoon. I went somewhere else and then went to the local city before going back to my hotel for the night. I got back at maybe 9 p.m. or so. I stayed in my hotel room watching TV until I got tired, and sometime later at maybe 10.30 at night, there was a knock on my hotel room door. I got up and walked over to see who was there. It was Mark. He was standing right outside the door. This surprised me, but I remembered that I had told him where I was staying. I felt really stupid, but just telling him didn't mean that I had invited him over, and how would he know which room was mine? I decided not to answer the door. I watched out of the peephole as he continued to stand there. He knocked on the door again and waited. I was sort of nervous, because I didn't know what he wanted or anything about him, really. He had been seeming pretty weird toward the end of our conversation earlier. Mark stood there for maybe two or three minutes, before turning and walking away. I was glad to see him go, but I had a feeling that he might return. The hotel that I was staying in was pretty average. It wasn't fancy or anything, but it also wasn't that bad. My room was on the first floor and on the backside of the hotel. Maybe two minutes after Mark left, I had returned to the bed that I was sitting on. That's when I heard a knocking on my window. I looked and saw Mark standing there, right at the window, and looking at me. He waved me over. I got up and walked over to the window, but only to close the blinds. When I did, Mark started banging louder on the window. It didn't last very long before he stopped. I thought maybe after that he had left, but he didn't. There was another knock on the front door of my hotel room again, just a few minutes later. I got up to check, and sure enough, it was Mark again. I went back over to my bed, and this time I called the police. I wasn't even going to bother calling the hotel and complaining to them. They didn't have a security guard or anything, so there probably wasn't much that they could do. I explained the situation to the 911 operator and was told that somebody would be there shortly. Mark had stopped knocking by then and was now gone. I wasn't sure where he went, but I expected him to come back, either to the window or the door. The police arrived several minutes later, and I spoke with them as they looked around for Mark. Unfortunately, he had taken off and left. The police found that he had broken into my car. My rear passenger window was smashed. Items inside were messed up, 
but surprisingly, nothing was stolen. I'm not sure if he did that because he was mad at me or if he was trying to steal something. Either way, I never saw him again, and I'm hoping that I never do. Last summer, I went on a cross-country road trip with my best friend, Emma. Between the two of us, we could drive for very long periods of time. We were switching off when we got tired, and sometimes one of us would drive while the other slept. I remember that on one of the first nights of the trip, we found ourselves driving on a quiet highway late at night. I don't know exactly what time it was, but we were about the only car on the road. We had stopped for gas maybe 30 minutes earlier and got some coffee as well. We were in the right lane, and I was driving with Emma in the front passenger seat. We were casually talking to each other when a car appeared behind us in the rearview mirror. I was driving probably 5 miles per hour over the speed limit and was on cruise control. The car behind us approached, going maybe 5 miles per hour faster than us. When it got closer, it changed to the left lane and then started passing us. The car was a black SUV, and when it got in front of us, it pulled into the right lane. After it did, it slowed down significantly. It was kind of rude, to be honest, and I switched lanes to the left to go around them. When I did, though, they immediately switched to the left lane, as if to block me. The SUV had no license plates on it at all, and I got a bad feeling. We were going slower and slower, wondering what this person's problem was. I quickly switched lanes again, and this time, I was able to pass them. As I did, I looked over and saw a man driving. He looked over at us as we passed. I was speeding up significantly because we had slowed down to probably 40 miles per hour or something. The road we were on had a speed limit of 70. The guy in the SUV then started speeding up extremely fast as well. I got back up to about 70, and the guy was now right behind us. We remained this way for probably 10 minutes. He was like one car length behind us, and it became obvious that he was going to follow us wherever we went. I didn't know what his problem was with us. Emma suggested that we take the next exit to see if the man would take the exit too. And when the next one came up, I did just that. The guy followed us off the highway to the exit ramp. We didn't know where we were or what direction this was leading us in either. After taking the exit, I went right because it seemed like there were a couple of businesses over there and not much to the left. The guy was still behind us in the black SUV. I saw a gas station, and there were two other cars there at the pumps. This made me feel a little bit safer, and I pulled in. We didn't even need gas, but I parked next to one of the pumps anyway, because it was well lit. The guy in the black SUV parked at a gas pump that was a little ways away from us. Emma and I got out of our car and walked inside the building. It was Emma's idea to go inside, and I'm not really sure exactly why, but we did. When we got inside, there was another person in the gas station, as well as an employee. The guy from the SUV did not follow us in. It felt safer being inside and away from him, but I also knew that we would have to return to our vehicle and keep driving eventually. I was hoping that the guy would drive away and leave. I walked over to the front of the store to look out the window. When I did, I saw the man moving from behind his car to behind ours. He was sort of crouched down like he was hiding from us. I went over to Emma, who was at another spot inside the gas station. I told her about the guy, and we called the police. We told them what was going on and clearly the man was up to something bad. He sat there hiding behind our car for quite a while. From where he was at, we couldn't see him at all. I just knew that he hadn't left, because I would have seen him leave. If we had gone back to our vehicle without knowing, who knows what would have happened. We spoke with the employee of the gas station and told him what was going on. About 10 minutes later, a police car entered the gas station parking lot. Emma and I were watching from the window the whole time. We saw the guy run out from behind our car, back to his SUV, and get in. The police flashed their lights, and the man attempted to drive away. Both he and the police car left the parking lot. There seemed to be a police chase after that, but it didn't last too long. 
the guy ended up being caught a little ways down the street. After that, Emma and I were able to continue with our road trip. It still creeps me out to think about that man though. Possibly, he saw us at the previous gas station that we had been to and decided to follow us for some reason. That's my best guess. What his intentions were, I have no idea. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to give the video a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a terrifying tale. See you in the next one.